Now, speaking of the variants of coronavirus, and remember the UK variant is being blamed on the crisis they're now seeing. Let's focus on the South Africa variant, and scientists have identified an escaped mutant that may decrease the efficacy of COVID vaccines. The mutation called E484K has been found in a variant of the coronavirus first spotted in South Africa two months ago. The variant has now spread, according to reports, to at least 12 other countries. Well, to talk more about this, we're now joined by uh, Professor Salim Abdul. Uh, He's uh, joining us for uh, Salim Abdul uh, Karim, member of the COVID Task Force. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us again on the show. Uh, first and foremost, tell us about the situation in South Africa and what we know about this variant. Good morning and good morning to all of the viewers. The situation right now in South Africa is quite dire in the sense that we now have more cases and more admissions and more deaths than we had at any point in the first wave. Our second wave came about six weeks earlier than we anticipated. We had thought it would come in January. Instead, it started in November. It seems that two th key things were responsible. The first is the emergence of a new, more transmissible variant. And the second is uh, the, our younger population engaging in mass uh, gatherings that led to super spreading events after their final examination. So that seeded the virus in the community. And now we are in the midst of our second wave, close to the peak. We are anticipating that the peak will be with us within this coming week. Right, sir. Initially, when this new variant was detected in South Africa, your health minister had tweeted regarding it, and he'd also seemed to indicate that uh, this uh, carried a, a, a higher, you know, viral burden and that, that more young people were getting infected because of that. Uh, but now, uh, what is the understanding among you scientists and doctors? So we've been monitoring the viral genomes, the genetic code of the virus, on a monthly basis. And since April this year, my colleague, Professor Dolivera, uh, comes up and we go through all of the information every month. And every month, it's been somewhat underwhelming in that we just see one or two mutations every month. And they minor mutations, they have no impact. And so we, we sort of got a bit complacent that we thought the virus doesn't really mutate that much and it's very stable. Well, in November, we were taken aback. Suddenly, a virus that was very stable, we saw 23 mutations. Almost 20 of them were leading to changes in the protein structure. And importantly, three of the mutations were in the key part of the virus that attaches to the human cell. And those three key changes make a difference because they enable the virus to attach more strongly to the human cell. And when that happens, uh, transmission of the virus is more efficient. And so our second wave, we have seen a virus that is spreading much more faster than we saw in the first wave, up to about 40, 50 percent faster. And that's what that is doing is putting huge pressure on the hospital system because the admissions are coming in very rapidly. So even though the virus itself does not seem to cause more severe disease, because of its greater transmissibility and efficiency of transmission, it's putting much more pressure on the hospital service. And what about these latest reports that talk about, you know, this uh, mutant, uh, you know, the strain escape mutant and how it could reduce the efficacy of the vaccine? So at this point, we understand that our three, the three key mutations in the 501YV2 uh, variant that we've described in South Africa, that of those three mutations, each of them on their own are involved in viral escape. In other words, if an individual has had this uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection in the past and developed antibodies, these three mutations individually can help escape those, muta the, those antibodies. In combination, E484, in other words, the mutation at position 484 seems to be the most important in that it enables the virus to escape from antibodies that were acquired during the first wave. Now, what does that mean? It means, uh, firstly, 
that we may start seeing more reinfections. At this stage, we are not, but studies are underway to look for those reinfections because if you don't look for these variants and if you don't look for them, you won't find them. So it's very important. And so we've increased our surveillance to do that. The second is, does it impact vaccine-induced immunity? And the answer to that, it's not known. None of the uh, vaccines that are currently available have data yet as to whether their antibodies are able to neutralize the 501YV2 uh, variant. We should have that information within weeks. All right, uh, Professor Karim. Well, thank you so much for speaking to us and telling us about all the research that's taking place there in South Africa regarding this new variant. And we'll, of course, be in touch for more developments. Thank you. Pleasure. Well, that's all the time we have on the show today. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.